Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to walk through the basics of ETFs, or exchange traded funds. So I'll talk about ETFs in more detail than we've talked about in other classes. I'll also walk through why ETFs are more popular now than they have been at any point in the past. And then I'll also walk through the issues that you should know about related to ETFs. All right, so ETFs. Uh, you kind of has, have a sense of what they are, uh, but let's kind of touch on what they do. So ETFs, they hold a passive portfolio. Typically, this portfolio is going to track an index, like the S&P 500 index, or the NASDAQ Composite, or the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So if some security gets added to that index, then an ETF that tracks that index is going to hold that particular security. Next, the fund shares... In an ETF, they trade just like equities. They trade on, st on stock exchanges. The price increases and decreases throughout the day, and you can short ETFs. Very, very flexible. Uh, they're also set up like open-end mutual funds. There's no fixed number of ETF shares out there. Uh, so let me give you an example. If you're interested in buying shares of the Spider, the SPY, the S&P 500 ETF, all you have to do is buy those shares, and the company that owns or runs that ETF, they'll take your funds, merge that with funds from other new investors, and they'll go out and buy additional shares of the securities that underlie that ETF, that are in that ETF's portfolio. Uh, now, ETF prices, they can differ from the NAV, the net asset value. Uh, the NAV is the intrinsic share price of the, the ETF's uh, portfolio. Uh, basically, you think of it as the intrinsic uh, price. Basically, if there's a lot of demand for a particular ETF, the price of the ETF's shares themselves can be bid up beyond what the NAV of the, the ETF's portfolio actually is. However, savvy investors would recognize, oh, this ETF is overvalued or it's undervalued, and they would make it a corresponding trade. Okay, so why are ETFs more popular now than they used to be? Well, there's been this trend lately where, oh, investors really have just stopped believing that portfolio managers have skill. And if portfolio managers don't have skill, why should investors pay for, pay the high expense ratios to own those particular funds? So a lot of investors have been moving to low-cost funds. So think the QQQ or the SPY. Uh, there's some other benefits with respect to ETFs. ETFs are extremely transparent. If I'm investing in the S&P 500 ETF, well, I know exactly what's in that ETF because it's whatever is in the S&P 500. And I can also go look up what the holdings were at the last reporting period. Uh, investors are also you know, reasonably certain about what this portfolio will continue to hold in the future. I mean, if it's just the stocks in the S&P 500 ETF, there's not going to be any surprises there. And ultimately, you know, a lot of these biggest, the biggest ETFs, they just track market indices. So if you're aware of what's happening on the market that day, you don't have to go look up what your own portfolio did. Oh, the market's up 1.5% or the S&P 500 is up 1.5%. I know exactly how my portfolio did today. Okay, so what are the largest ETFs by assets under management? Well, here they are. There's a reason we talk about the SPY all the time. It's because it's one of the earliest S&P 500, earliest ETFs, and it's also the largest ETF by assets under management. A uh, couple of these other ones, like the, you know, the core ETF, the VOO, you know, the VOO does something very, very similar to the S&P, the Spider. They just have a lower expense ratio. The QQQ, it's got a little higher expense ratio, but it's also investing in more securities and very often smaller securities that are less liquid. And then you have a bunch of other ETFs like, oh, the, you know, oh, developed markets ETF, uh, some of these other ETFs. So depending on the difficulty of acquiring the shares and the liquidity of the underlying shares in the portfolio, the expense ratio is going to be either pretty low or fairly high. Now, there are some other issues that ETFs have. Uh, so ETFs, 
they do face a bit of tax risk. If you own shares of an ETF and the underlying index drops a stock, well, the ETF is going to liquidate the shares of that particular stock. So if it's selling those shares for a gain, that could lead to capital gain taxes on your behalf. Uh, also, ETFs don't perfectly track the indices. Remember, when you commit your capital, you invest in this ETF. You put in, I don't know, $100,000 to this ETF. That ETF has to go out and buy the shares that correspond to that particular index. So that could take some time. Uh, what a lot of ETFs will do is they'll go out and find some other asset that they can hold, uh, like the, oh, the E500 mini or something like that, that will track the S&P 500 while they're in the process of buying the shares necessary. So ETFs, just as a side note, they, they do closely track the indices, but they don't perfectly, uh, perfectly track it. Uh, there is a bit of concentration risk as well. And this is something that is becoming a much bigger issue in the investment world. Basically, as investors pile into ETFs, the stocks that are held by the big ETFs, say the S&P 500 stocks, uh, there's been this price run-up in these stocks because, well, every ETF that tracks the S&P 500 has to own shares of those stocks. So that essentially pushes the share price of those stocks higher, and the share prices of stocks that get delisted from the S&P 500 actually fall because ETFs will you know, start to sell their shares. So we are seeing this concentration risk, and it is becoming a bigger concern in the investment industry. Also, as ETFs become more prominent, we could see less price discovery. Or put another way, there could be more misvaluation in the market. If everybody is a passive investor, how much actual valuation work is being done by active managers? I mean, if there's fewer managers actually performing the analysis, there's more opportunities to find more undervalued or overvalued securities. And then also, there could be some big swings based on minor events. So I guess I touched on it a few seconds ago, but if a stock is dropped from an index, this could lead to a massive devaluation. Uh, so, you know, it brings up an uh, honestly a pretty straightforward issue if you could predict which stocks are going to be delisted or added to a, an index why wouldn't you take a, an options position or you know buy or sell those stocks ahead of time all right so let's summarize ETFs have become increasingly popular due to low fees and relatively high returns they'll always track an index, so the S&P 500, the NASDAQ composite, maybe a bond index, uh, what have you. And then also, this increase in ETFs, it can lead to some issues that really haven't been talked about in the broader press. The big one being misvaluation and possible significant devaluation around the removal from a broader index. So with that, I'm going to conclude, and if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Thank you.